Welcome to the Foundational Gifts Inspirational Podcast, hosted by author, speaker, and life strategist, Nicole Kurtzie. Nicole offers her spiritual gifts to encourage us all to live boldly and to fan the flame of God's gift in us. For the next 15 minutes, enjoy this infusion of spiritual strength and practical action. Well, hola, 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 and welcome back to the Foundational Gifts Show here on the CWA Radio Network. I'm your host, Coach Nicole Kirksey. Follow me on Twitter at Coach Nicole and visit our Facebook page at Foundational Gifts. So September is Self-Improvement Month, and all month long we have been discussing ways that followers of the Lord can improve on uh, and strengthen particular areas of our lives. And our guiding article is called Week by Week Guide, How to Celebrate Self-Improvement Month. The article is by Courtney Erickson, and it is on the Family Share website. And as always, a link to the article is available on our show description page. So in the very first show of this series, we really focused on giving ourselves permission to improve ourselves, um, permission to get better, if you will. We emphasize the difference between self-help, which focuses on improving ourselves and our own strength. So look at, think about that on the one hand, and then relying on God to mold and shape us as believers and allowing ourselves to be improved and participating actively in that process. On the other hand, we are of course focusing on the latter here on the Foundational Gift Show um, during Self-Improvement Month. So, and then that was the very first show in our series. And then over the next three shows, we talked about improvement in the area of mental wellness and physical fitness and spiritual growth. So definitely be sure to check out our first four shows uh, in our self-improvement series. Those are in our show archive pages and there are archives at cwaradio.com. They're also here on Spreaker. And there are archives on our YouTube channel. On YouTube, you can just search for Foundational Gifts for archives of this particular show. And you can also search for Christian Women Affiliate. uh, And all of our shows on our network are archived there. So today's show has us focusing on relationships as part of our self-improvement process. And our guiding article encourages us to evaluate our relationships with those people that we care about the most, our spouses, our children, etc. Now, the first chapter of the first book of the Bible offers us some indication of how important relationships are. Now, if you know Genesis chapter 1, you'll know what I'm talking about. In the beginning, in the beginning is how the Bible starts out. And in the beginning, we find God creating, and he's creating, and he's creating, and he's creating, he's creating everything. Um, that's ever existed and then all of a sudden in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 God uses a powerful word and the powerful word is us he says let us make human beings in our own in our own image to be like us let us to be like us and then in the next verse in chapter 1 verse 27 it says that God created people he created males and he created females he created these people so from the very beginning we see that interrelationship is essential to who God is who he is let us make and interrelationship is essential to what God does Um, he himself is the triune God he's the God in three persons he's the blessed trinity Um, So interrelationship is integral uh, to who God is. He's one God, but he is a we. He's a we. And then uh, the one part of creation that God makes in his own image, he makes us a we. He makes us a we. People, we're a we too. Now he could have just made one person, if you think about it, he could have just made one person and left one person there. Now, he did make one person. He made Adam first. We learned that in Genesis chapter 2. And then after Adam and God hung out for a while, God saw that it was not good for this single person, this Adam, to be by himself. 
So he made Adam a me. He turned Adam, the me, this individual person, into a we with Eve. Just like God is in us, we as humans are we as well. Now God could have made males only. He could have made females only. He could have just left Adam by himself. He could have made many genders and not required us to couple in order to reproduce. We could have just reproduced on our own. I mean, God is the creator and he really could have done whatever he wanted with us and with anything in creation, but he had a purpose and a plan for everything and a reason why he chose what he chose. And he chose to make us interrelated with one another. Um, when he made both males and he made both males and females, and he made us so that we literally need one another to survive. And I don't really care how far science goes and reproduction if someone is human and alive, they are still going to need mommy parts and daddy parts to be reproduced. They're going to need both. And that is connection, that's interdependence, that's relationship. And this need I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about marriage even. I'm talking about at the fundamental level, this very practical and basic existence and function and survival all people need other people. You may have heard some of the research about how babies die if they're not nurtured and cuddled and cared for. Even if you feed them uh, and change them and care for them without, you know, sort of touching and cuddling them, they fail to thrive. We need each other literally to survive. And if we want to be more like God, if that is our purpose for looking at self-improvement, we need to consider ourselves to be an us or we just like God is in us. We can't consider ourselves to be these lone rangers, these independent people out here doing everything on ourselves, by ourselves. Um, that's a very American notion from the United States, this bootstrap ideology that we did everything on our own by ourselves. That's not true. Every success, every person living, everybody who's ever made any progress has done so with the help of other people. It is required. By scripture and in practical living, it's required. We all need relationships. Now, I do want to take a second because I am a nerd and I know that nerds listen to this show. So if you are a nerd like me, there is a science. There's a science called parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis. Where um, usually... It, it occurs in nature in different kinds of animals, but once you get up to mammals and humans, um, artificially, uh, these can be produced using eggs only and no sperm. Parthenogenesis, it's like egg only reproduction. Now, the problem with that at very low levels of mammals and definitely in humans is that these embryos are not viable. They don't live um, outside of of the body um, in the lower level of animals when they do they function differently they don't reproduce and then in, in humans they can't live outside of the body they develop birth defects and they're likely to be lost in miscarriage it's, it doesn't work so instead the genetic parts of that are used specifically for stem cell research and and cell therapy um, because they're not considered to uh, be human in the same way they don't have mommy parts and daddy parts um, they're not used to make babies. So that is my technical disclaimer about us needing each other. Um, there's a scientific thing, but everybody walking around, living and breathing, every human being who's ever lived um, has a biological male as a dad and a biological female as a mom. That's just the technicality of it. And we are all literally by nature interconnected and we need relationships. We need relationships, we do. Okay, back to the word. So God is in us and we are we, right? <laughs> That's my deep theology uh, from the passage. And when the Savior gave instruction on the great commandment, it was actually two commandments related to each other, right? The great commandment to love God and love others, right? So forget for a moment what the commandment actually is. We're not even there yet. The fact that when the teacher was asked the question, what's the greatest of the commandment, he gave two. The fact that there are two commandments and there's not just one, and that the two are equal according to the passage of scripture. 
and they're interrelated with each other. So the content of the actual commandments are the same. They're about love. So they're connected in that way. The commandments themselves are developed in the image and the likeness of God. That same us that created man in our image, that us created humans who are also in us. And then the commandment that he left for humans to be more like God has two things interconnected to each other based on love that we pour out in relationship. This is all a partnership. And so the greatest command, the greatest commandment of how we are to live out our God desire for us to be like him, that's a connection. To love God with all we are and who we are as much as we can and to love other people, our neighbors, as much as as we do and in the same way that we love ourselves. We're supposed to love up towards God. We're supposed to love out towards each other with all that it is that we have. We're supposed to be relational. So I'm hoping that you see a relationship pattern here that everything that God has designed for us is relationship based. And our relationship with the Lord is primary, right? From the founding of creation our relationship with God is primary and we have to have other relationships as well with other people so if we're thinking about self-improvement and relationships in terms of the who of our relationships certain family members would be considered first right our spouse is supposed to be our primary relationship you know our husbands are supposed to leave their family of origin and cling to us cleave to us um, they're supposed to love us like Christ loved the church. Our spousal relationships are important. The children that we have are primary, and our grandchildren, our parents from which, from where we came uh, are important, uh, who raised us and cared for us, and their parents, our grandparents, our siblings with whom we were raised. Um, all of these are immediate family members, and these relationships are really important. And then we have other family members, aunts and uncles and cousins. They're very close to us uh, genetically, uh, hopefully and practically, and in our lives they're close to us, but they're considered extensions of these other primary family relationships. And then, of course, we have our families of choice, like how many of us have friends and church family, you know, people we went to school with and, and, and people who we've chosen to build community with who are closer to us often than our own flesh and blood. I know that I do. Um, I have people in my life that other people don't even realize we're not related by blood because we're so close, because we're always together, because we are totally clicked in. And when I say to them, I'm not related to this person by blood, they're like, you're lying. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, a lot of us have, um, if we're, when we're blessed, we have families of choice or even better when our own friends are part of our family. So my very best friend, uh, her mom and her sisters, I mean, we're like a family. I always call myself the fourth sister, you know, and her mom helped to, to me to give birth to my daughter. And, and, you know, a couple of times in my life, I ran away from home as a teenager and as a grown woman, right? I ran to my other mom's house. So having those relationships are really important. Sometimes they are closer than our flesh and blood and they're essential and we have to stay connected to those people. So we have old friends that we grew up with, you know, we have newer friends uh, that we know people all in between um, we have friends that we've bonded with over something significant um, grief support is a great example uh, different kinds of grief you know divorce support um, you know if you've had a, a catastrophic illness or lost a, fam a loved one all those kinds of groups they're they're significant and, and having those relationships with those people are important certainly our church family we're supposed to be doing life together when we're in church together. Um, and so hopefully we have really good relationships with people that we attend church with. Um, we spend a lot of time at work. If you have a work job or you work outside of the home, um, oftentimes people that you work for, uh, your coworkers, people you supervise as a leader, um, and people you serve at work, they all become like family because uh, you spend so much time together and because you're all dedicated to a common cause doesn't matter if you're making widgets or whatever it is you're doing you're in it together uh, and a lot of times if by sometimes by just a sheer amount of time you spend together those relationships become essential 
Uh, we have neighbors who live around us. I know in this day and age, neighbors are not what they used to be. You know, in our parents or our grandparents' age, or even when we were younger growing up. Um, but I have been blessed in my life to have really good, strong neighborhood relationships where um, right now uh, my community is helping a man who is, is critically ill, who's living with a chronic illness, um, who has chosen to call in hospice. We're all helping him. Um, that kind of love and that kind of support is really invaluable. Um, so those are just some examples of types of relationships that we have in our lives and how important they are to us when we sit and think about the purpose that people serve and how we share with them as well. And people really are everywhere, everywhere in our lives. And we can always improve the way that we relate to other people with whom we have a relationship. And in these relationships, we have to really go beyond our feelings, and go beyond our energy in the moment, even go beyond our personal preference and really consider ways to become more Christ-like, more like God. That's how we were originally intended to be. And as Christ followers, this is how we're supposed to grow and develop, to become more like Christ. Uh, our first and primary relationship, we're supposed to be more like it. So I challenge you to put your name in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. For me, it says, let us make Nicole in our own image to be like us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And that's exactly how it was. Let us make Nicole in our own image to be like us. There's an expectation there. <laughs> so I dare you put your own name in there. Let us make your name in our image to be like us. And I'm telling you what, it'll straighten me up on any day. If I'm feeling particularly introverted, which I often do, uh, antisocial, which I'm feeling right now, I got something to go to and I don't even want to get dressed. You know, if I'm feeling outright grumpy, which happens to all of us at, at some time, um, that would be a really good time to consider, you know, how I would like it if the God whose image I'm created in acted that way towards me. If I'm supposed to act like him and I'm acting introverted and grumpy and antisocial, how would I feel? Not so good. So I should really work. Uh, to consider to come out of my own feelings and out of my own emotions and energy levels in that moment uh, and always uh, strive to be more Christ-like in my relationships with other people. So in our article that's guiding us, uh, issues to these questions really to, to consider in terms of self-improvement around relationships uh, are posed to us. And I want to read you what the article says. Uh, here's a quote from it. The article says, Think about how you can be a better spouse, a better parent, and friend. Do you need to put down your distractions and focus on what those you love are saying? Do you need to spend more time with those you care about and less time working on your to-do list? Think about the qualities you admire most in your family members and friends. Do you possess those same qualities? Are you putting as much into the relationship as those around you? It's the end of the quote. So there's a lot of questions uh, to pose to consider how we are in relationship. So just thinking about putting down distractions. So I always chuckle when I think about my daughter when she was a, 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 a little one. And she learned this from me doing it to her when she was a toddler. So when she got a little older, she would do it to me. Um, you know, I would do it to her when she would, you know, be doing toddler things and I would try to get her to focus. So then when she got older, she would do it to me. So how many times I think about, has she, you know, she's talking to me and, and, and I'm half listening and she knows enough to know I'm not listening. So she'll jump in my lap and grab my face and make me look her in the eye and say, mommy, focus, focus. You know, we have to put down distractions. Um, you know, just my husband, how many times have I had to repeat myself about something? Cause he's half listening and half working on the computer. I came home last night after a long day of meetings and I told him about all these wonderful things that happened. And then 20 minutes later, he asked me a question about something that I told him. I said, w were you even listening to me? He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, but we have to sometimes put down the distractions and say, okay, loved one, important person in my life, good friend, someone who needs me. I'm eye to eye with you. I'm listening. I'm focusing. So set aside the distractions. 
Um, we're challenged to spend more time with our loved ones. Now, my mom lives a couple of states away. She's disabled. I'm her primary caregiver. She, uh, my aunt and I work together to make sure she has everything she needs. But my mama is a handful. She is an all personality and she wants everything her way. So when I talk to her, it's, it's a lot of energy. And so like, sometimes she'll call me, of course, she'll call me right in the middle when I'm like going into a meeting or something like that. And I swear sometimes I just look at the phone and I go, okay, I'm just too busy to deal with it right now. And I don't take the time that I should to respond to her. I know she's fine. I know she's okay. I know it's not an emergency. And I just decide, you know, even though my time with her is, is priceless to me. And I, I should treat it better. I'll treat it differently. Um, just on a more practical level, I think, you know, how many times do we tell a good and important friend, you know, we got to get together. And then months go by and we don't get together. Uh, I was with a friend the other day and we're, we had dinner and I realized that before that I hadn't seen her in six months and I hadn't even talked to her in that long and I didn't even realize it until I counted. I said, the last time I saw you was blah, 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 it was so long ago. I mean, yeah, I kind of keep up with her on Facebook. I know what's happening, but that's not a relationship. That's a news ticker, right? <laughs> that's a flash or an update. That's not eye to eye. How are you? How have you been? Uh, what's going on with you and, and I miss you and I want to celebrate with you and I want to help you in any way I can. I just want to be in your presence because you're awesome. That's the kind of thing that we should consider. Um, what about person, personal qualities that you admire in a loved one? So, um, you know, I think about an important friend of mine. You know, she's moving away and I co-hosted a gathering for her and she had a card shower and I videotaped people, you know, just kind of saying to her what she meant to them. And I wrote in my card that she always makes everyone feel like they are her very best friend. It is anointing and a gift that she has. She is a mighty woman of God and she is one of the most authentic person, people you will ever meet. Um, and I admire her and in terms of her qualities, I wish I could be more like that. I wish I could be more outgoing. I wish I could pour a little bit more into people just intuitively. She doesn't even try, it's just who she is. Um, and I admire that about her and I'm glad I had the opportunity to take a second to tell her about that. And she was so overwhelmed. Like she was crying for two days about how wonderful it was and how people had blessed her to share their thoughts about her. So that's awesome. Um, another thing that the article asks us to do is, is to ask how much do we put in relationships? How much do we put in relationships? Now I am so blessed to have some people who are awesome. Uh, they are good friends, they're spiritual leaders in my life, and they have set a high bar in terms of the level of effort that they put specifically into their marriages. I'm talking about crazy time, I'm talking about crazy effort, and these are busy people. You know, they run multi-million dollar operations, they have huge families and whatnot, but to them, their marriages are primary, and whatever else is going on can take second, third, or whatever, there are no excuses. Um... And so, you know, my hubby and I, you know, we're very close, but we want to be better. We want to take the time to spend more time together. We've been doing a much better this year, but there's an event coming up that we know we need to go to, right? A marriage uh, retreat that some good friends of ours are putting on and they always do such a great job. And it'll be a great refreshing time for us. We're entering a new season uh, as our daughter is growing up and, and, and getting into college and so forth. And so we really want to make sure that we're well invested and we know we need to go but it is college football season, right? And so, you know, my husband wants to stay home and watch the game, and it's my team. It's my school team that he's watching, so I want to stay home and watch the game. And in some ways, that's bonding, and I think that's important to do sometimes. Um, but this conference is rare, and it's important. And so we're looking at each other like, I know you want to stay home and watch the game, but really, you know you need to just tape that game. You know, <laughs> we can get it later. Um, the other thing is we can leave the conference a little early. I think the game is a late one. But anyway, that kind of stuff is so important. Another example of what we put into relationships, the effort, um, our girls' weekends. I love it when uh, uh, groups of, of women who are true friends go and do stuff together. Uh, I did a great girls' weekend with uh, some good friends of mine who have been friends of mine for almost 30 years. Uh, we got together about a year ago. And we tried to do it this year, but it was uh, more difficult. Uh, one of us had an injury. She couldn't travel, and the other one couldn't travel. 
So that was kind of hard, but, but making that effort to get together to say, hey, I know we all have busy lives, but you're important to me. Again, that eye to eye, space to space time um, to build that relationship is good. You know, my very bestie lives across the country. She moved again across the country. <laughs> the first time she lived there for 13 years, I did not visit her at all. Uh, she moved uh, to another part of the country and I did visit her there. Um, but she's moved back to the other place again and I'm going. I have to. She is so uh, important to me. And while I'm, you know, doing everything else, her, my relationship with her is something I have to put effort into. Uh, I love her. I love her and I want to uh, stay best friends with her. And so that means I need to make the effort. Um, so these are just some things to think about when we think about the quality of our relationships. And I'm sure you have examples in your own life. So with relationships, here are some passages, uh, just a few passages that might be able to help us along um, when we're thinking about um, how we can consider uh, the quality of our relationships. And these are in no uh, particular order. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 13 in the new, these are all in the New Living Translation. It says, there, no, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, of course, we're thinking about literal, the literal laying down of the life around death, but there are things in our lives that we can lay down for the benefit of improving our relationships, right? We talked about that, just making time and making the effort um, for relationships. That's one way to express our love for a friend. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So this passage was the first one that I learned um, as an adult, right? Um, on my own uh, as a minister. I had to learn this passage because I used to do the greeting at my church. And uh, so I know a lot about the pa this particular passage is close to my heart. And it talks about... We talk about motivating one another. If you look at the root of it, part of it is like um, compare. It's compare, which is what our article says. Consider the good things about a friend of yours, characteristics that you wish you had. And it doesn't mean that like um, like a negative comparison, like a jealousy or a one up or 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 anything like that. It's to motivate one another. I want to do better because I see my friends doing better. Um, I'm hoping that I'm in, in a space where my friends see me and they want to do better. We're supposed to encourage one another to do and be better. And don't forsake getting together. Don't be so busy that you can't spend time with those people who matter. Um, not only about coming to church and gathering, but in principle, in relationship, make sure that you're not neglecting meeting together. Um, and that's important because the time of Christ's time, Christ's return is definitely near. We can see that. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. I think in relationship that's so important because forgiveness is such an essential part of any relationship. We have to forgive people so often to stay in relationship and Lord knows that people who love me and care anything about me have to forgive me as well. We have to be forgiven. We have to ask for forgiveness. We have to accept forgiveness and we have to offer forgiveness. And we have to believe that people are changing for the better when they're truly in Christ. Um, and that's important. Cut folks some slack. <laughs> okay. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 says there are friends, quote unquote, friends uh, who destroy each other. But a real friend sticks closer than a brother. That's an ex that's an um, kind of an extension with, of what Corinthians was saying. It's like when you're really friends, you tear you know when you're I'm sorry when you're not really friends, you tear each other down, gossip about each other, set each other up. You know it's like crabs in a barrel, all that negativity. Nobody needs the quote unquote friends or frenemies or any of that. When you're a real friend, you stick close to somebody. You're wishing them the best. You're spurring them along. You're encouraging them. You're forgiving them. You're setting a good example for them. You're wishing and praying the best for them. That's who we want to be to people we're in relationship with. Um, 
And then the last passage is uh, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17 says, A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of need. A friend is always loyal. You're not going to catch a true friend gossiping all about you and, and tearing you down, uh, like is mentioned in the first part of Proverbs 18, 24. They're always loyal. They're always got your back. Doesn't mean they don't critique you. Doesn't mean they don't, don't try to set you straight, right? Because iron sharpens iron too. Um, but you're never going to um, hear something on the outside that they haven't shared directly with you. Um, and that's important. Always loyal. Always got your back. And then it says a brother, somebody who's even closer, is born. They're made for times to help you when you're in time of need. So if you really are close to somebody... You know, you can't just be around for the fun times and the celebrations. They're going to be hard times and you got to be sticking close to them. Um, and hopefully you have people who stick close to you as well in times of need because they come up all kinds of times of need. Uh, whether you just need someone to talk to, you're having a hard day, or you're really, really going through something. Health crisis, financial, divorce, you know, death, or, or whatever the case may be. We need those brothers and sisters who are truly close to us, especially brothers and sisters in Christ who will stand with us during those times. So those are just a few scriptures, and I did put some um, uh, link to several more relationship scriptures uh, in the show description page for parents and children and, children and friends and spouses uh, and with God. And I really do encourage you to consider your relationships and the status of these as really part of any personal growth or health assessment that you do. Relationships truly are the foundation of, of life and should be treated uh, as such in our own best interest the better our relationships are the better we are so to wrap up today's show I would like to read the summary of our guiding article and the summary says self-improvement isn't a task you ask someone else to do it must be accomplished only by yourself this month is the perfect time to evaluate yourself find the areas you wish to improve and dedicate the entire month to improving those areas and watching yourself gradually become the person you want to be. So as we know with podcasts, people can listen at any time. So if it is not September, if it is not 2006, whatever time it is this month, uh, whatever month that you're in, is a perfect time for self-reflection and a perfect time for self-evaluation. So take the time not only to see where you need to grow and improve, but also take some time for reflection about what it is that you are doing well, how God has blessed you in particular, how God has moved in your life, how far God has brought you from, how you've grown over the past few weeks or months or years or decades, and how you can really build upon this growth in order to keep going. If God's delivered you in an area, or really grown you up in an area, then you know he can do it again in another area or he can do it again in the next level. Um, anything that's not growing is either already fully grown or dead. And we know from the word that we're not yet perfect. So if we stop growing, we're either in the body or in our faith completely dead or dying. And we don't want, it, we don't want that to happen. Let's keep moving forward. Let's keep growing. And let's end this series of on self-improvement. Uh, let's end this series... Uh, by reciting our passage uh, with as a short prayer. Uh, our passage for the series is Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24 in the New Living Translation. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Amen. So that is our show for today. Be sure to join us next time at 10 a.m. Eastern here on the CWA Radio Network. And until next time, hasta. You have been listening to Foundational Gifts, where Nicole Kirksey shares ideas to help move you upward and forward into your next level. Be sure to join us in our online community at the Foundational Gifts page on Facebook to continue in this journey of bold living.